Hello, hello, hello. There's a strange thing, situation. There's a strange situation here. And it involves the so-called Hohokam. The, the Hohokam is a society here in the North American Southwest. They tell us. And the word Hohokam is borrowed and butchered. And really it means um, the vanished or the all used up or those who are gone. It refers to people lived here and now they don't. There's another word, Hohokam. And you'll find this word on the official Hohokam guest visitor center and who come actually is a different word it refers to a respectful term for ancestors so the word's not even correct the word doesn't mean anything and doesn't even refer to a tribe of people that we know so if i sound mocking or condescending I, i'm not i'm not mocking culture i'm not even mocking the tribe because the tribe the whole come it's not a thing it's just a term that we butchered and used to, to refer to these people i'm mocking the the garbage that they that they try to feed us as history and the idea that we just buy it without any actual investigation which you'll see doesn't take much for this to fall apart so the one thing that these hoho come have that is really remarkable is a system of canals in fact you can actually say that the city of phoenix it owes its existence to the Hohokam because of their irrigation system, their canal system that they dug, which rivaled Rome in complexity. They had water gates. They had 18 feet deep at some points, 40 feet wide. Why don't know that oh, oh, farmers later used, used them as roads and drove wagons in them. And some of these canals are actually still in use today. They were 500 to 1,200 miles. And they tell us that these people lived here for 1,500 years and then randomly vanished. And other than that, there's a house in Casa Grande that we'll look at. And there's a national monument, a place called Snake Town, which is apparently their central hub. And there's a lot of talk of these ball courts. They were apparently these prolific ball players. They had rubber balls. Somehow we know they have rubber balls. And they had these oval 200 uh, courts where they played ball. Balls and trash heaps and some pottery. And that's it. Here in the, the hub of the fake information network is what I'm looking at. And yeah, recognized for large-scale irrigation networks. Most complex in North America, right? Salt River Project has been, uses these today. They don't really know how to tie these people in. They don't really know who their ancestors were. If they just know that they had a kick-ass irrigation system. Now, there's a national monument. There's actually two national monuments to them. And one of them is actually the first, I believe, the first actual national historic site in the country. But something doesn't really add up. First of all, the National Monument. They tell us that this is called Snake Town, 30 miles southeast of Phoenix, designated a National Historic Landmark. They say there's a nearby Casa Grande ruins in Coolidge. Now they're telling you there's no public access to the National Monument, and the Gila River community has decided not to open the area public. Snake Town is not 30 miles southeast of Phoenix, first of all. Phoenix metro area includes a city called Chandler. Snake Town's in Chandler. Yeah, people live in Chandler might be surprised by that. They say here the community of Snake Town, apparently central to their culture, was abandoned. They found oval fields, oval shaped fields. They identified them as ball courts. However, in 2009, it was suggested that the shape was not a ball court. After all, it was a dance floor. So for 80 years, we believe that they played ball with rubber balls. And then now suddenly it's a dance floor. People are just most specialists agree that pottery samples contain elements implying the presence to different, but probably related. Okay. So we're just guessing. Snake Town is dated to 300 BCE. Whether or not these were the Hohokam people is subject to debate. So again, they're not even necessarily even linked to Snake Town. The site of Snake Town, positioned on the Gila River community, 250 acres. Amalhari, this man, he is specialized in archaeology. He is most famous for his work at Snake Town. Here we have his work began in 1930. They ex conducted extensive excavations on Snake Town. Here you have this man visiting Snake Town in the 30s, in the 60s. They uncovered ball courts and trash heaps, and pit houses, hearths. 60 midden mounds, a central plaza, an elaborate irrigation, 400,000 artifacts, and then they inexplicably backfilled it and created a model. So I don't know why you go and dig something up and backfill it, protect it. And this is where the this is where it really becomes a joke. Is here's your photograph, Snake Town. I know, very educational. A random blip in the desert that looks like just like every other random blip in every other desert. And so you're thinking, well, where's this national monument at? You see this here. Prehistoric farmers inhabited much. You try to go to the website, page being worked on. It's been being worked on for years now. You go to the National Park Service site, it doesn't exist. And that's the thing about this, this national monument. When I first heard that there was a national monument, a national park in Chandler, I was like, how about that? I had no idea. 
So I went to check it out and there's nothing there. I mean, not like it's closed down. Like there's, there's nothing there. It's just off the freeway here. So while half a million people every day pass by it, there's nothing there. This place. Now they'll tell you that over here is uh, the site is off limits. It's reservation land, so you can't, you can't go out there. There is a road, this road, but there's nothing there. I mean, unless we're counting this. Is this Snake Town? Maybe. So yeah, there's your national monument. Now, what kind of a joke is that? That's the people that are trying to go visit all the national parks. And they are always flummoxed when they get to this one. Nothing there. Now, I'm assuming that we're talking about this oval being the ball court. So what gives? How do we have a national park that's not a national park? Let's check out the Casa Grande ruins. Now, for the record, I understand the correct phonetic pronunciation to be Casa Grande. This is one of those ridiculous towns that's... The name of the town is mispronounced, like Louisville. Amarillo. Here they say that this is the Casa Grande. This is the great house. This is what they named the town after. This four-story mud building. First of all, I know in what world is this four stories? Uh, I count two, three, maybe? If there's a basement, I guess? I mean, even from this far away, you can tell that the thing is being supported by metal. It's been stuccoed all over the base. And there's even plywood in here when you get closer, which is like, you know, they say, wow, this amazing structure. It's four, cen seven centuries old. It's like, uh, it's made of mud. It's not seven centuries old. Nothing made of mud is seven centuries old. I'm sorry. I mean, you guys are propping it up with stucco and wood and metal just to keep it alive. This is nothing if compared to people that are building canals that are 50 1500 miles. There's nothing primitive about that. And I think that these, the whole comma actually tied into a much more complex, different society. This is just a smokescreen. This usual crap that they give us to say, look at, look at how advanced they were yet not advanced. Look at how they can make these irrigation tunnels out of just stone and their own bare fingernails for, for 1200 miles. And, uh, and, yeah, and look at the houses that they built. Yeah, but yeah, they never discovered the wheel. But they did have rubber balls, yeah. And they did have dance co dance floors and stuff and trash pits. And it's a shame that it's once proud people just at urban sprawl destroy it. Well, if Snake Town was any indication, there is nothing to show for these people outside of these canals. Which the canals are amazingly impressive. But if you want to look at what they're, they're calling evidence of these people of this society it's really a joke and it's really kind of sad the the disservice and the disrespect that we paid these people whoever they were the those who have gone before i mean we wouldn't have a city here if it was a, and we're just going to talk about some mud house that's casa grande is nowhere near phoenix but let's check it out here it says the gila river and, and the salt river were both perennial streams carrying large volumes of water the gila you could actually it was once navigable by larger river boats from its mouth to near phoenix taking a river boat into Phoenix seems ludicrous now, but that's how much water they had. And really Phoenix and Tempe struggled with flooding for a long, long time until they diverted these rivers. And now, right, the Gila is usually a trickle or completely dry, as is the salt. And it's kind of a shame. So let's check out some of these things. Mesa Grande. This preserves a group of Hohokam structures constructed during the classic period. The ruins were occupied for hundreds of years. And of course, we mentioned the extensive water canals. And sadly, it's one of only two mounds remaining, with the other being in the <clears throat> Pueblo Grande Museum Archaeological Park, which uh, we'll get to that. The site's central feature is a massive ruin of adobe walls and platforms. No, it isn't. As a matter of fact, no one even knows that it's there. And it, they drive by it all the time. Owned by B-movie actress Aquanetta and Jack Ross, they owned this uh, site. The city of Mesa bought it, and now they're complaining about, oh, it's a shame that urban sprawl took over. Well, the city of Mesa has owned it since the 50s. And then it's their fault. The mound remains remarkably intact. The site remains protected, but undeveloped. Okay. It is not only not intact, it's not protected at all. The ruins are located to the west and across the street from the hospital. Artifacts have been found in the neighborhood. Right. So let me show you what they're talking about here. This is the entrance to the park, which is clearly a modern construct. Here's room D, a 1955 excavation. Remarkably intact, they say. Okay, this could be anything. Yeah, I mean, in 1955, you discovered this, and 55 years later, 65 years later, you're, you're just getting around to doing this? I mean, this is, this is bullshit. Now, this is a newer picture, and yeah, okay. This shows certainly something. Some foundations. This is also a newer photograph. But look at this place. Protected. Really? Protected by what? Just off the side of the road. No, no one even knows it's here. It's in. It's near a parking lot. I mean, there's like, what is that? A, a grocery store? 
These look like dirt jumps. This is supposed to be a ball court. Using a rubber ball made from a local plant. Like, what bullshit is this? What disrespect to the to people that actually lived here. To pretend like this matters to you. Oh, it's a shame. Oh, it's a, such a shame that we just, we bought it and we just let everything just get built up all around it. Here's the Pueblo Grande ruin in irrigation sites, which they tell you is at this Pueblo Grande Museum Archaeological Park. They make it sound like it's like set aside. It's not. Out of the 400,000 artifacts that they uncover from the earth, this is what we get. What, 12 of them? Where are the other 399,000? This is not what we see. You are here in the heart of Phoenix, really. And I'm not even sure why they show this having water in it. There's no water. And here you go. People of power and influence are believed to have lived in houses surrounded by mound. Very vague and very boring ruin. This could be made in a few afternoons. And again, look where we're at, right off the freeway. Right off the freeway. Like, no one knows this is here. This is the archaeological park they're talking about. This is the canal, which is what they should be looking at. The irrigation is, is what's... The impressive thing about these people not this not this this is the largest mound okay i mean this is a joke this is what's impressive the fact that these are still here not their recreation representation of what they might have looked like yeah i'm sure they built 700 miles worth of canals but they they, they couldn't uh, invent a surface to place their things they just put everything in the ground i mean this is just trash they're not even trying and they're just selling us this nonsense this is their ball this is their ballpark where they played games the villagers stood on top of the surrounding mound to observe the game. I could see them now, like, yeah, yeah, I get him, Jimmy. I'll buy it. Oh, here we go. These kitchens were used by the... Made from mesquite. These kitchens. What kitchens? Oh, I guess the tech was so advanced that we couldn't figure out how they did it. We couldn't reproduce how they did it. So we had to use these highway poles, these metal highway poles to uh, in a bungee. Because we couldn't figure out this high tech, man. They were so advanced. Like, look at this, dude. They stood, They just stood these reeds up, like, so amazing. Kitchens. Ridiculous. Oh, and the ovens. Uh, look, and what an oven. And look at that. Not And not so clean. Not even a trace of soot. What an amazing oven. And clearly a prehistoric backdrop as well. You know, I didn't know that my neighbors had prehistoric ovens in their front yard. But apparently they do. Because that's what this is. And that's what this tells us. The oven. The ovens and the kitchen. I mean, this is a joke. This is an absolute joke. This is the best you got. Reading this, but really, and looking at these... these alleged artifacts or monuments it's just it's a smoke screen i don't know what for but i'm guessing that these ho hokam were a lot more complex and a lot more tied into a different culture than we're than we're led to believe and they do this all the time they'll build some little like stone in sedona they'll build like a little wall out of rocks uh, out out where no one would ever build a structure not not, not like into the hill not not somewhere strategic or like and just out in the middle be like look at ruins yep ruins right there it's like what are you trying to get me to look at that's what are you distracting me from pa every pa piles of rocks are not ruins like it's not like they, they they're just people these people that knew, knew how to dig i mean you, you on the one hand you're saying yeah just using their fingernails and rocks they dug a super complex irrigation canal that we could never do today using just our fingernails and rocks but on the other hand it's like oh yeah yeah, yeah. they didn't even invent the wheel and they lived in these little like rock stacks and they drew swirlies on boulders it doesn't make sense and like everything we're not being told the whole truth i don't know what that truth is but it's not this disrespect they say that sadly they say that this look at this is a sign of how evident they are you know this is graffiti this is modern day graffiti or doodles this isn't what the chieftains and the wisest people in society are out here doodling on rocks they're the ones making you know irrigating seven hundred thousand acres of canal farming they are not doodling on rocks. This is something a four-year-old does while their mom is busy washing clothes. And then they, they try to pass them. Look at how cute and advanced they were. Why, because they drew little like turtles? This is so condescending to assume that this swirl has anything to do with their society. When you walk into an abandoned place, in our society currently, what do you see? Do you see messages from our political leaders written on the walls? Like fine, you know, script? Or no? You see Fulk Jerry written on, you know, in, in spray paint. Why would this society be any different? People need to stop accepting this trash that they spoon feed up. And use your mind. What are they hiding behind this facade of, oh, Snake Town's just over yonder. You can't get to it, though, because uh, it's Indian land, uh, that next half block. You know, the I-10's right there. And, uh, yeah, you can't drive over there because it doesn't exist. It's been a fraud. Those aren't kitchens. Those aren't ovens. That's just shit they put together because they feel like they had to have something. They say that, um, sadly, the only trash pits that remain are in a place called the Old Guadalupe Cemetery. Well, 
I happened to have been to that cemetery. I happened to have rented a house over there with some friends once. And I happened to be on a walk with my roommate's dog. And I was just tagging along. And we're strolling along down the alley. And lo and behold, through the alley, we find ourselves inside of Guadalupe Cemetery. It's a fascinating little place. Every grave covered in silk flowers and like, drink beers. And clearly people came and hung out with their loved ones. Uh, it, there was some really fancy gravestones. And there were some very uh, unrefined, uh, you know, kitchen ceramic tiles and things like that. Homemade uh, headstones. It was very endearing and very, uh, you know, very interesting. And I walked around the whole place and I, I didn't take any pictures, but I, out of respect, but I, I thought it was great. And never once... In that small place, did I see anything indicating that there were native Hohokam trash heap remains, nor that that's were the only ones remaining left in the state. So if this is their idea of protecting things, putting them in a graveyard, unmarked, where anyone can wander in from an alley, putting these, uh, these little parks uh, just off the freeway up here, this is the archaeological park they're talking about. Here's the Hohokam freeway where they made sure to make these mocking Coco Pelli carvings. It, it's like the Chaco Taco. It's like just a mockery of a culture. And here's your archaeological park. Right here where this, see this fancy uh, shit is by the freeway? They put more time into this than they did in this archaeological park. The amazing archaeological park. Here's where those incredible kitchens were. Here's the canal. That's the actually amazing part. Dumpy little park that they claim. Oh, I got so encroached on with urban sprawl. Really? Because all I see around here is bulldozed earth and the airport right here, which I'm pretty sure you guys control. And as far as the all oh, the poor trash heaps, all that's left are in this tiny little tiny little cemetery. That the city, no one cares. Everyone just encroached on them. Nobody even knows about them. If you told a hundred people in Phoenix that lived there their entire life that there's a National Historic Monument to the whole common Chandler, it's a national park, they would not know what you were talking about. And why would they? Because there's nothing there. And here it is. Uh, where in this are these ruins? These are people's backyards. This is an alley. Here's what it looks like in person. Fascinating little place. And not a single marking of some ancient gravestone. So I don't know what's going on here. But, um... It ain't what they tell us. And the Hohokam deserve better. That's all I'm saying. Fire! Fire! Fire!